Good evening. I'm Corinne Turtis, the commentator. Our readings this Sunday show us that God needs us to help him accomplish his work. Just as God needed Amos to be his prophet, and Jesus needed the 12 to help him establish the kingdom of God, so God continues to need us to help him. As we gather to pray this day, we are reminded of his love and providence so that we can also be a blessing to others. The presider at this Mass is Father Ted Lawson. Please stand and let us begin. Our opening song is number 318, All Are Welcome, All Belong, number 318. Well, good evening. Once again, as Cora announced, I'm Father Ted Lawson. I am one of the Redemptorists who is here for the St. Anne Annual Novena to Good St. Anne, which begins a little later on this week. So there's no special collection for that tonight. I'm just simply here to be with you. It's wonderful to be here. And we're in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we've come together to celebrate this Eucharist, let's pause and call to mind our sin. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Bye. 
Let us pray. O oh God, show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all that for the, who for the faith they profess and accounted, are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people, Israel. The word of the Lord.
us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose in us him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. The word of the Lord. Yeah, oh, 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for their journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The 12 drove out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. I am going to take a little bit of a risk. I am here from Wisconsin, Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. I'm sure most of you have heard about it. And uh, yes, it's still a very nice place. I must thank you for the novena weather, the fog. It is a joy, and I know not everyone will agree with me. It's like those who come to Wisconsin and appreciate all the snow. I don't want to hear about it. But it's wonderful. Regardless, it's wonderful to be here. I believe we have some very important lessons to learn about what we are taught. Jesus is sending out his disciples as prophets, as people to call, to teach others. That's what prophets do. And Jesus is the prophet of all prophets. He is the one who gives the direction that is needed. Sometimes when we think in terms of a prophet, we think of a fortune teller, someone whose gloom and doom is being taught, who's all about, you better watch out. And that's not what truly really what prophets do. Prophets are those with messages that go against that recognizing that something must change that things cannot be business as usual. Seeing and experiencing a world that is not good. Do we have anybody doing that these days? But we have to be careful of what is the news. What is that alternative? What is that teaching? that is being shared because it's very, very challenging. So often, Jesus was excluded from what he taught, the prophecies he brought, forgiveness, healing, love of neighbor, the list goes on throughout everything. Jesus teaching there's another way another way and that way is the kingdom of god but jesus in meeting closed minds recognizes that his disciples will also meet closed minds that's one of the challenges about prophecy 
we don't hear just exactly what the disciples did. We don't know exactly what they said. However, we knew, know how Jesus instructed them to act. He did not send disciples out to fight. Jesus did not send disciples out to argue. Jesus sent disciples to share the news, to call the news of repentance. And we know that when those prophecies take hold, what a difference they make. Last week we heard about Jesus being rejected in Nazareth, in his hometown. People had their minds made up about him ahead of time. They weren't going to pay attention to anything that he had to say. And that was their decision. Who knows how life emerged for them, evolved for them after the cross. All of Jesus' prophecies took him to the cross. Those simple, very simple, important statements that he offered to bring a new way of life. Forgiveness, love of neighbor, acceptance. Remember, Jesus didn't just hang around those who were holy enough to be around. Thank heaven he was with all of us sinners. Jesus gives that formal very important message, though, about prophets. By the way, we're all called to be prophets. Do you know, I can't tell you how many prophets I see here this evening. Everyone I see here, everyone I see here is a prophet. One way you're a prophet is that you are here. You're able to share you are able to express perhaps sometime. I was to Mass at beautiful St. Anne's on Saturday night, and it made a difference in my life, period. You don't have to tell them what a wonderful homilist you had. You don't have to, but if you'd like to share that. But you could get trapped in a lie. I'm not going to go there. But the reality is, each time we are able to express what we believe, what we find. It's how then we become prophets. And that is the challenge that we need to follow up with. Be ever aware in our actions to be prophets with those we meet. What prophecies? If I had a microphone, I would love to walk around the church. I think I'm going to do it tomorrow morning because I like where this is going. But come around with, uh, in the church with a microphone asking, what prophecy do you have, sister? Tell me right now. What, opposite, what prophecy do you have, Amelia? Tell me what your prophecy is right now. And you're the two people whose names I know right off the bat. Otherwise, I'd be telling everybody. But what is a prophecy? A prophecy I have is that I have been coming for the St. Anne Novena, the annual Novena to Good St. Anne, off and on for 17 years. Every time I am here, I am transformed. I love being here. Do I have to beat you over the head and say, you better be there too? No, but I've at least shared that with you, my prophecy that this is an enriching experience to have, being here for the 117th annual Novena to Good St. Anne. You know what? I just realized my math was terrible. It's 19 years that um, this is would be within the 19-year frame for my being here for the annual novena.
Every time we gather, we learn, we accept Jesus' healing touch, and then we share it with the world. Prophecies are contagious. And what a joy we can have to fulfill them. But we have to begin by accepting them, and we accept them through our faith in Jesus. We have a wonderful week ahead, starting on Thursday. We have a wonderful time coming up with the Novena. I'm going to be there. And I'm not going to say anything further. All right, I'll be watching for you. <laughs> no, 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 I won't do that. We have a wonderful, wonderful possibilities. God bless us. Shall we stand and profess our faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. By the Holy Spirit, for our Mary, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Holy giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God gives us love without condition. We hold up all our needs in prayer. For the church, that through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we may grow in our trust of our Heavenly Father, who offers us forgiveness and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for governments in every part of the world. May leaders work to serve their people and provide opportunity for all. May they facilitate reconciliation and peace and find ways to end injustice, prejudice, and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, give us discernment, wisdom, and strength that we might oppose the injustices of our times. Help us face rejection with courage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the diverse people of our community, that we cherish one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, especially Louis Sullivan and Peter Bala, that they find comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Jeff Morgan, Maria Asuncion Raparart, and John Wan, as well as those who mourn for them, that they may find peace with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Father Philip Jan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy God, you call us to walk in the love of your presence. Help us to share the riches of your goodness with those who are most in need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. <clears throat> 